Okay, we're in the last section of the P chapter, and we're going to talk about rational expressions. And rational just means fractions, so fractional expressions. So I want you to recall something that you learned back in pre-algebra. Recall that the division by zero is always undefined. So if you have 5 divided by 0, that's undefined. And some students ask me, how do you know that's undefined? Well, let's go back to a problem that we do know. Let's say I have 15 divided by 5, that's equal to 3. And 12 divided by 2 is 6. And 0 divided by 9 is 0. Okay. So looking at this, we know that 3 times 5 is 15. 6 times 2 is 12. 0 times 9 is 0. Now can you figure out why, what number can you put in here? Times 0 will ever get you 5. There's nothing that I know of. So when you look at um, that, the problem, 5 divided by 0, there's nothing that I can put right here times 0 that will equal 5. So that's why we call that undefined. There's no defined number. So we never really want division by 0. So in example 1, we want to make sure that we can include numbers from the domain. We want to find all the numbers that must be excluded from the domain of each rational expression. So look at part A. We want to make sure that the denominator does not equal 0 because our expression will be undefined. So we know that x cannot be 2 because 2 minus 2 would be 0. We don't want 0 in the denominator. Okay. Um, in part B, I don't, I can't readily see what x cannot be. So if I look at this carefully, Joe knows that I can factor um, the denominator and I would get, what, x plus 1, x minus 1 because the difference is 2 squares. So in the denominator, if I had x be negative 1, that would give me negative 1 plus 0, so that would give me negative 1 plus 1 that would equal 0, and 0 times anything is 0. And x cannot be 1 because if I put 1 right here, 1 minus 1 is 0, and 0 times anything is going to be 0. So we don't want 0 in the denominator. Okay? And in part C, I can't see readily what um, would make the denominator undefined, but let's go ahead and factor that denominator. And the negative 18, I need 2, 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6, mm -hmm. like 3 and 6 would be what I need to use. And I'm going to make 6 positive and 3 negative, and I'm going to double check that, x squared, 6x, minus 3x is 3x, and negative 18, so that's right. So x cannot be 3, because if I put 3 right in here, that would give me 0, and 0 times anything is 0. And if I put a negative 6 in here, that would make this factor 0, and 0 times anything is 0. Okay, so now that we know how to include numbers from a domain of a rational expression, let's go ahead and look at how to simplify rational expressions. For example 2, I want to simplify. And so um, we can only reduce common factors, so remember that, the reduce So um, let's go back to something simple from pre -algebra. If I have 5 times 6 over, let's do 5 times 3 times 2 over 5 times 7. You can reduce out the 5, 5 and 5 are common factors, and then you would go ahead and have 6 over 7, because there's no other common factor there. You can reduce common factors, factors are separated by multiplication. I want to remember, or remind you guys, that you cannot reduce terms. If I have 4 plus 2 over 4 plus 9, you can't cross out the 4, no. Because those aren't factors, those are terms, so don't do that. Okay? So let's go ahead and look at this problem here um, in part A. 
and we can simplify. Remember, we can reduce common factor. That means we probably want to go ahead and factor the numerator and denominator. If I factor the numerator, the great common factor is just x squared. I'm left with x plus 1. The denominator, I can't really factor that. I can pull out a 1 if you really want to, and you would get x plus 1. So x plus 1 is a factor in itself. And so when I reduce common factor, I can go ahead and reduce these two common factors. And my answer would be x squared over 1, which is equal to x squared. Now, in the beginning of that problem, we want to make sure that um, we go ahead and state our restrictions, I call them restrictions, or what should be included from the domain, and x cannot be negative 1 in this expression. So the answer is x squared, but we know x cannot be negative 1. And part b, if I factor the numerator, I get x and x as the first term of my binomial. And I do plus 5 plus 1, because the only two numbers I can do to multiply give you 5 or 5 times 1. And when I go ahead and fall that out, I get 1x and 5x and 6x, and that's the middle term. So now I'm going to have x plus 5, x minus 5, different than two squares. So here are my common factors. And so my answer is going to be x plus 1 and x minus 5. You stop right here. Please do not cross this x out and that x out. Why? Because of the terms are not factors. This entire thing is a factor and this entire thing is a factor also. Okay. And in this problem, x cannot be... 5, negative 5, it cannot be negative 5 or 5. And how do I know that? Look at the denominator here. Okay, let's go to example 3 and multiply rational expressions. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and multiply across the top and bottom. And I multiply across the top and bottom, I get this. I'm not going to multiply just yet. I'm just going to go ahead and multiply the two factors across the top and bottom. And I'm going to factor. And I get x plus 1, x minus 1. That's from here. Down here, the denominator, I get x minus 1. And then here, I can pull out a 3. I get x minus 7. So these are all factors. At this point, I know that x cannot be 1 or 7. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and recopy this. I have x minus 7, x plus 1, x minus 1, x minus 1, x minus 7. Now I'm going to put the 3 out here in front. Remember, order doesn't matter when you multiply. So now I'm going to go ahead and cross out common factors. This is a common factor with this. This one is a common factor with this. So my final answer looks like it's going to be x plus 1 and 3 on the bottom. Okay, and the final example I have is dividing rational expressions. And a lot of students will forget um, in these problems, it's going to be in your homework, um, when to find the restriction on uh, this type of problem. So the first thing you want to do, though, when you're dividing rational expressions and dividing fractions, you want to go ahead and change your division problem to multiplication of the reciprocal of a second fraction. That second fraction flips over. This one flips. And you change the multiplication. And once you change the multiplication, um, you just proceed like the last example. But we have to do, when you state your restriction at this point, or what x cannot be, in the initial problem, x cannot be negative 3. And here, this would be um, x plus 3, x minus 3. So x cannot be negative 3 or 3. So we already have two restrictions, and then how this one's repeated, so I don't have to worry about writing it twice. Okay. And now we do a multiplication problem, so I go on from here. And I say, well, that's just x and x. I'm going to go ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and um, factor this right here. Mm -hmm. I get x minus 4x plus 2. 
which I'm going to get x plus 3, x minus 3, times x plus 3 over x minus 4. And I'm going to go ahead and combine the all one problem. You could probably skip that step. The all one multiplication problem. Okay, now be careful here. We've already stated that x cannot be negative 3 and then 3. But also look here, we already got x cannot be th negative 3 or 3, but x cannot be 4 also. So we got a lot of restrictions. So let's go ahead and combine that all into 1. x cannot be negative 3, 3, and 4. And in your homework or your assignment, they're going to ask you to put these in ascending order in your homework. So just put them in order, order from smallest to largest. That's not my answer. This is just my restrictions. I call them restrictions or what X cannot be. Okay, so now we're going to cross out common factors. So I'll go ahead and say that this is the common factor. Here's some common factors here. So my final answer is X plus 2 over X minus 3. Can we cross this X out and this X out? No. Okay, so we leave that alone because those are terms, not factors. So my final answer is this. Restrictions are up here. Okay, they're going to ask for both those things in your um, assignment or my math lab homework. Okay, and I believe that's the end of P.6, that's the end of Chapter P. If you have any questions, please let me know in class or email me.